Uh, hey, uh, courtside owners and board, now it's uh, Lance, uh, and I'm uh, here. It's just me today, but I'm, uh, again, using uh, Steve's place, Unit 31, which is being remodeled, and I'm here with Jose Jimenez Hello. and his uh, sheetrock expert, Julian, and Jose's uh, company is... Jose's Painting. Jose's Painting, and so they do, they do the, the full restoration after... Plumbing. So we've looked at the same closet that you may have seen in other videos, but uh, again, the problem, we've got these polybutylene pipes, which need to come out. And for the downstairs unit, there have to be several cuts to allow the pipes to go through the floor or perhaps, I'm sorry, through the wall or perhaps the ceiling to get to the second unit. And so there'll be some cuts in the sheetrock and we need to figure out a way to make it uh, come back together. And say, so Jose, uh, you know, we've looked, we've looked at this. We know that this main closet is going to be the thing that may need some restoration. If you've got sheetrock, it's going to be a little more work. If you just have paneling and just want the panels cut out and screwed back in place, then you don't, you guys don't have to do as much work or as much sanding. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we know that this bathroom is not going to be a lot of disruption. The guest bathroom might be a little more disruption. Uh, we know that uh, this room won't require you to do a lot. There might be some ceiling cuts that need to be repaired or perhaps just this wall on the downstairs going up to the upstairs. Some plumbers have suggested they could run a line under the crawl space straight up through here. And that would be good because you would not have as much ceiling. Yep. And of course, popcorn ceiling requires a little more work. If we do have to have cuts in the yeah. ceiling, the popcorn is the is the most labor intensive, but we'll account for that. Uh, we know there's going to be some cuts in the laundry room and perhaps getting some to get into the bathroom. This bathroom may or may not need a lot of cuts in the drywall. It depends on what the plumbers find. But in a best case scenario, all you'd have to do is wall repairs. So let me just have you stand here, Jose, and just tell us, now let's imagine uh, the plumbers have left. You've got no, your team has noticed that the plumbers are gone. Uh, they've worked on a top and bottom floor. Mm -hmm. And so now just tell us what the person who lives there, especially in the bottom floor, will expect you know, on day one after the plumbers leave and until your team is done and in terms of mess, and what will be in the way and how livable it is on that overnight. Well, obviously, the shiro has to come and put some mud on it and that requires some sanding. Yeah. It's going to make a little dust, but we're going to make sure to clean the moss of the dust. And then with, with the second cut, he's going, to, he's going to come and do some more dust. But after that, we're going to make sure that it's not dust. Well, not, it's going to be some dust here and there, but it's going to be uh, livable and you're not going to find much problem. Okay. And he's going to make sure to clean as much as possible, but you might going to find some dust that you're going to have to clean because it's a little hard to clean everything perfect. Right. So and then after that, I'm going to come and do the painting, and it's going to be pretty much done. And just make sure that it's not going to be perfect, perfect because we're not kind of... Right. But it's going to be nice. Okay. So the best case is if the homeowner has an old can of their original paint and we can just match that for yeah. for touch up that's going to be the easiest work the cheapest and you'll be uh you'll be done sooner and they have less walls to worry about yeah. uh, worst case is they they don't have an exact match you've got to do some matching and then you might have to paint that whole room yes. with a very similar but not perfect color and the board needs to account for that in terms of your most expensive work. So the most expensive we could have would be a sheet rocked closet that has yeah. to be mudded and painted. Some ceiling work might have to be done. And if it's popcorn ceiling, that would be the most labor intensive. And then if there was a room or two that the paint just, you had to paint the whole room to make it uniform. So that would be our kind of worst case scenario. Best case scenario would be like my unit paneled closet yeah. you just screw the panels back in place that's great i can access the plum uh, the plumbing in the future uh the best case would be that the plumbers don't have to cut any of the ceiling and we'll be pushing hard for that uh and then the the homeowner has the paint and it's pretty recent you guys just touch it up okay so now day one plumbers are gone your your team uh, julian's in for the sheetrocking. your team uh comes in julian 
puts two, maybe three coats of mud in place, yeah. and it's a quick dry mud. Right. Plastic. Okay. So day one, you can actually do your mudding, and then you wait overnight to sand the next day, or you sand on day one. Uh, next day. Next day. Mm -hmm. Okay. So day one, we get some coats of mud in there. They dry. They dry overnight. The next day, you come in. You have the okay. sanders, and you've got sanders with the with the vacuum. So electric sanders and the and a vacuum to so minimize the dust. What do you put in place to trap dust? You put plastic or I put plastic. Okay. Plastic and tape. Plastic Right. And so that's it. That's not even overnight. That's just you come in, you put the plastic, you do your sanding, yeah. then you take the that off, and then it's ready for for painting. For painting. Yeah. So so day two is sanding and and painting. It's so day two in the afternoon. You can start painting. Okay. That's it. That same day it's okay so in that case if the plumbers take okay. let's say three days for their work but probably two your team needs really two days, two days yeah. of of entry into the home yeah. and then you're done and the homeowner or the resident pretty much sees what they saw before it all started yeah okay okay great um and then you know we talked about your, your you guys are professional. You'll leave it as neat as you can. You'll take precautions, but the homeowner, I'm sorry, the resident should be aware there's some dust that's going to yeah. get around. And so the recommendation would be maybe three days after the work is done when everything's settled, dust everything real well on your own and, and vacuum. Yeah. And then you probably really won't see too much dust yeah, after that. Yeah. You will not, will not see much, but if you do, it'll be minimal. Yeah. And, and so the, the, since the sanding and cleanup is the same day, is there any worry about uh, dust from the sheetrock sanding or the mud sanding getting into the air conditioning or uh, the intake, or do you just shut that down for a little bit? We can put some plastic to around okay. the same day. That way it doesn't absorb the dust. And then when we're done, we just take it off. Yeah. When we need it to do it again, the next day we'll do it again. And then maybe just turn it off during yeah, the time that you're sanding yeah. so it's not getting sucked into the system. Okay. I mean, that's easy peasy, just little details yeah. and people worry about that. So we just want to address yeah. that. All right. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Any other advice? Now we've talked about as if you guys are doing the work, the board, you'll coordinate with the plumber. Yes. Um, there is the issue of is a general contractor adding much to it or are you guys self-sufficient and you can just talk to the board and the plumber yes we can talk just to the plumber to the board or whoever is in charge uh -huh. uh, i don't think it's a need for the contractor if you guys feel a need for it it's fine with us too yeah but it, i don't think there's a need okay that's great uh let's see i think i think that's about it any other thing things you know we the, the board would be reaching out to the owners and the owners would be reaching out to their renters um and we you know we'd be on that with you okay. um but anything else you can advise the person who lives there i mean that they would know after the plumbers are gone what had to be cut so they could just remove their stuff from that area and it's that master closet there you know they're going to have to have their stuff out for the plumbers mm -hmm. and then for you guys and then after you've painted, it just needs a few hours for it to soak in. Then they can start putting their cells back together. Two, three hours, you can put everything Yeah. Back okay. Well, that's great. That's uh, that's what people need to know. Uh, any right. Anything else you want to tell us about your company or your technique? And I will try to be as professional as possible. Yeah. And hopefully, we have, uh, I have a bunch of referrals. If somebody wants a referral for sure. me. Just ask for it, but other than that, we're, yeah. We're and I got your name from Steve Solana, one of our board members who who you've done work with before, and he recommended you and said you did good work. So okay, okay. Pre right. appreciate it. Thank you.